Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Pinstripe Perspective here on SNY. I'm Sweeney Murdy, joined as always by my co-host, Connor Foley. Connor, this is episode five for us, and it seems like I think we're getting a pretty good rhythm here as the season goes along for us. And I think the Yankees prospects are following the same pattern. As it's getting a little bit warmer, deeper into the season, they seem to be picking it up too. Much higher stakes for them too. If you look around the organization, some of the biggest names are starting to really find their stride at the plate in June. You know, Anthony Volpe just hit a a game-winning home run for Somerset the other day as he has a really big month. Jason Dominguez playing some of the best baseball of his career and launching home runs down there in Tampa. And here in Scranton, Estevan Florial month by month has been steadily climbing in his production at the plate and starting to see that potential that the Yankees have always hoped that he would kind of reach. Florial was once ranked number one on the Yankees prospect list. He's still one of the Yankees' top prospects, and yeah, he's one of the ones who's starting to pick it up. Connor and I had a chance to speak with him a few days ago. Esteban, it seems that as the weather has warmed up this year, so have you. April to May to June, your numbers keep getting better. What seems to be the key ingredient for you? Uh, I think for me, it's going to be afraid to fail, I think. As a young player, sometimes we're kind of uh, afraid to do the adjustment. Uh, at the end, like, we're kind of afraid to do what's going to happen. But I think, like, uh, the main focus is, like, not afraid to fail. Um, go do it, uh, let's see what happens. Esteban, how have you handled going up to New York and coming back down this year? You've done it a couple times at this point. Is there an adjustment that you have to make when you go between the two places? Uh, I'm going to go with that, guys. It's, Sometimes kind of, I mean, that kind of gets to your head. It's kind of like when you're up there, you don't want to come back here. Nobody won uh, because, I mean, it's big league and you want to play there as well as you can. But after that, I mean, when you come down here, you know, it's something you can't control. At the end, the only thing you can control is go out there and do the best you can. I mean, and I, I really, you know, thanks to the Yankee, at least they give me the opportunity to be, you know, to wear the, the uniform in any facility. Uh, I want to take advantage of it. It doesn't matter if I'm up there or down there, so. There's always been power in your swing. What's the key to you to maybe consistently getting the power out of your swing now? Uh, I mean, for me, it's not try to, to do too much because I think to hit a home run, don't, you, you don't go there and say, I'm going to hit a home run. Like, it's not that easy. It's not that easy to go, all right. If it was that easy, I mean, everybody was, was gonna be hit like a hundred home run a year because but for me it's gonna do kind of, um, like try to have a lot of contact try to i mean have good swing of the ball and whatever happened after that you can control that i mean just go out there um, take a good at that i mean i know the power is here it's, it's there some it's not something i have to try to generate more power or whatever please go out there and try to um, to try to put that good swing on the ball and that's it Happen, whatever happened after that, I take it. So you mean everybody can't do what Aaron Judge does? Uh, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> not at all. Not everybody can do what Judge does. Judge is in another level. So this guy is so many, he's unbelievable. Esteban, how do you handle being a Yankees prospect? Who, and at one point, you know, early in your career, you were rated number one on many prospect lists. That must be a heavy expectation to bear for someone who's 19, 20 years old. Now you're 24. How do you deal with that? How did you deal with that? I'm telling you, I mean, being a number one professor for New York Yankees, you know, there's a lot of responsibility to come behind that. But I think for me, I don't try to think about it because I know like, if you ever think about it, you're gonna put pressure on yourself that you don't need to. And um, for me, it's kind of like, all right, um, being prospect is just a name. It's, at the end, you have to go out there like any other player and do the job you have to do. It doesn't matter if you were a prospect or if you're not. Go out there and be the best you can and be yourself. Uh, kind of like put my mind in, like, in that mood. Like, all right, it doesn't matter what go around you, you can control that. Control what you can. Uh, go out there and do the best you can. Uh, try to do that every day. Esteban, thanks so much for joining us. Good luck to you this season. Hope to see you in the Bronx real soon. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Connor. Florial has gotten a couple of call-ups to the big leagues this year. On the pitching side, 
we spoke to another player who's had a couple of call-ups and has been part of the Yankees' success, left-hander J.P. Sears. All right, J.P., we have added to the 40-man big league spring training, major league debut, first major league win, and we're only in June. So, I mean, what has this year been like for you? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's um, so far it's been <clears throat> pretty much everything that I've, I've hoped for uh, initially, you know, after getting added to the roster that last November, um, you know, after getting that news, I know that like there's a chance that I could help the team this coming year. There's a chance I have a, to make the team out of camp, uh, you know, all those things that you just listed. So, uh, yeah, it's been great so far. Um, I've been just trying to take advantage of my opportunities and stay healthy and um and just kind of keep the uh, you know the pedal to the metal. Take us through that first big league start. What was that day like for you? Yeah, so uh, I heard some some mutterings like, like a couple of days before that there was an opportunity like I might be able, I might be the one getting the spot start. Uh, but nothing was really for sure until uh, about a little over a little before twenty four hours before. So I knew uh, the day before that morning. So those days the longest days like it seems like it takes forever to get to six o'clock so six thirty when you start warming up um so that the day felt long and then uh but then after like but like so i was just looking forward to it a lot and uh but then once it got there i got i felt pretty comfortable out there pretty relaxed uh the team made me feel you know warm in the in the clubhouse and all that so it was it was a lot of fun jp this is going to sound kind of silly but the key to pitching is throwing strikes, and your strikeout to walk ratio is pretty impressive. Uh, has it been kind of natural for you? Do you have you always had the ability to to you know be in the zone and throw strikes where you need to? Um, I think uh, I think that that come has come for me over time with confidence of my pitches and with just being able to to use them the right way and and get guys you know feeling like they have to be pretty aggressive at the plate. It kind of all like piles into one. I want to talk a little bit about your fastball. When did you realize that it was kind of a different fastball than other guys had, and it was going to be something that could really help you have a really good career? Um. I think that like I was aware of it that I that I had just like a unique fastball probably early on in my college career. I think the biggest the biggest part of it that plays up I guess compared to maybe some other people is that I just approach it like I have a little bit lower arm slot uh, than a lot of guys. You see most guys are you know right over the top. I have a little bit of lower arm slot, so that kind of makes it play up a little bit. Um, and then like, yeah, the run on it uh, definitely like helps out as well. The Yankees really do a good job of of really showing you what you're good at and how to how to get the most out of what you're good at. So uh, I think coming up through the system, I've just learned more and more about the effectiveness of it and how to use it the right way. Uh, a lot of guys have pitches that, that play up just as well as I do, and a lot of us don't know why. It's just God-given. So. We're coming off the U.S. Open here, and uh, yeah. I, know you're, I know you're a pretty big golfer. Who's, yeah. who's who's the yearly foursome that that you uh, that you guys are playing some pretty big courses? The yearly with? foursome. That's a uh, former yeah former rare rider Michael King uh, and uh, Brian Keller who was with us up until this year, and then uh, Greg Weiser. So the four of us have played a, a couple of good courses in um, South Carolina, North Carolina. Just kind of spend some time together in the off season, hanging out. Who is the biggest trash talker in your group on the golf course? See, uh, in that foursome right there, we're we're like we don't really fuck a lot of trash. We just we just hang out and enjoy the time. But uh, I would say if you had to pick one, though, it might would be myself. Uh, <laughs> just because I get a little bit frustrated here and there and, and playing the game, and maybe let it get to me a little bit. So then I want to take it out on somebody else and try and make them feel the same way I do during some at some point during the round. So probably me a little bit, but we don't do too much trash talking. Well, JP, continued good luck and success to you. I'm sure we'll see you again at the big league level at some point. The machine keeps rolling along in the Bronx, but you're having a fine season at AAA as well. Look forward to continued success for you. Thanks for joining us. All right. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Time now for our segment, An Alternate Angle. And Connor, I think JP Sears gets a little producer credit here because he helped us out with this segment by mentioning a guy that you wanted to talk about named Greg Weiser. Oh, how about that? Yeah, Weiser is a guy who, you know, some people in New York might be familiar with. He's from Bayshore originally. He went to Fordham for college. And he's kind of just been a guy that's plugged through the organization. And this year he's having, 
you know, really good year. He's striking out more guys than he ever has. He's always had a good slider, but this year his fastball is playing up a little bit more in velocity, which is helping him strike out so many more guys. He's also been just more aggressive overall, it seemed. And, you know, there always seems to be a relief pitcher who does well in AAA that inevitably gets called up for some spots in the big leagues. And Weiser could be that guy, and it would probably be really exciting for him being a local kid. Certainly another name to watch out for as this Triple A season moves along. Hey, if you're new here, make sure to go check out some of our past episodes on SNY.TV or the SNY app. We've had some wonderful conversations with Anthony Volpe, with Nick Swisher, looking at the Yankees minor league system. And make sure you come back every two weeks for a new episode. For Connor Foley, I'm Sweeney Murdy. Thanks for watching Pinstripe Perspective.